Dear colleagues, in this video we are going to talk about choroidal detachment, a brief introduction and pathophysiology. Choroidal detachments occur when there is an accumulation of fluid or blood in the suprachoroidal space, a potential, potential space between the choroid and the sclera. Choroidal detachments are known by several terms within the literature including choroidal effusion, uveal effusion, ciliochoroidal detachment, and ciliochoroidal effusion. However, they all refer to the same condition. The most common cause of choroidal detachment is secondary to filtration surgery like trabeculectomy. However, there are other causes such as trauma and inflammation. Clinically, choroidal detachments may vary in presentation from asymptomatic to very poor vision, ocular pain, and nausea. Eye exam findings include serous detachment, shallow anterior chamber, or angle closure. The choroidal vasculature is supplied both by the long and short posterior ciliary arteries of the ophthalmic artery, which enter the choroid to form the arterial, halar, and settler layers. These vessels supply the choriocapillaries. The suprachoroid is the area between the choroid and the sclera and consists of fibrous lamina, melanocytes and process of fibroblasts. In a healthy eye, the suprachoroidal layer is about 15 micra thick. There are physiological mechanisms that serve to maintain an equilibrium between the protein and fluid levels in the layer. They are vortex vein drainage, osmotic diffusion, hydrostatic forces, and scleral vessels. When the hydrostatic and oncotic pressure gradients are disrupted, or there is disruption of the drainage of the scleral flow, serious fluid or blood accumulates, which consequently leads to thickening of the cord and formation of a fluid-filled suprachoroidal space within the suprachoroidal layer. So analysis of the fluid in this space reveals that it's mostly formed by protein, which is the same as the serum, which is believed that therefore it is a transit date of blood rather than aqueous humor. There are two forms of choroidal detachment, mainly serous and hemorrhagic. Serous choroidal detachments occur when there is leakage of serum from the choroidal blood vessels into the suprachoroidal space. Hemorrhagic choroidal detachments occur when there is abnormal blood accumulation in the suprachoroidal space secondary to rupture of ciliary body vessel. A condition called uveal effusion syndrome occurs when there is disruption of drainage of fluid from the posterior eye and is associated with scleral thickening. The pathophysiology of serous choroidal detachments may be explained by starling forces within the choroid. The intraocular pressure is the interstitial hydrostatic pressure of the system, and the suprachoroidal layer is the interstitial space. When there is disease, surgery, or trauma that cause low pressure in the eye, this greatly reduces the interstitial pressure, therefore increases the driving pressure out of the capillaries into the interstitial space, causing fluid to migrate into the 
supracoroidal layer. In addition, inflammation or trauma can also increase the permeability of choroidal capillaries and leading to accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space, which is the supracoroidal layer. About hemorrhagic choroidal detachments, they usually happen secondary to the serious choroidal detachment induced from surgical hypotony. The hemorrhage appears by stress on either the short or long posterior ciliary air artery during a serious detachment. One of those vessels may rupture. This occurs because the length of the arterial connections between the cord and the sclera are short. Hemorrhagic detachments may occur intraoperatively or postoperatively. If they occur intraoperatively, they are, call they are called expulsive supracoroidal hemorrhages, and they called because they expel intraocular contents through the surgical wound, and visual prognosis is poor. In summary, I introduced the condition called choroidal detachment to you and we reviewed the mechanisms how fluid, serous or blood accumulates in the supracoroidal space. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.